In our previous video, we took a string that has a slash t delimiter and we replaced it with a bar to make it more user friendly. For that, we use the replace all text function in uh, App Inventor. In this video, we're going to go one step further. Instead of just replacing it with a bar, we're going to replace it with a label. And that label will be different based on what field we're in. So uh, the name of a plant, a description, and its location. So this is going to require several steps that are going to expand our blocks view. Uh, first of all, I'm going to remove the replace all text that we put together earlier as much as I like that and frankly would probably want to keep it. I'm temporarily going to change this back to get plant uh, so we can see what the raw uh, what the raw list, what the raw data looks like. So here you see the raw data is a backslash t. Now the trick is we have three distinct fields, plant name, description, and location, and only two delimiters. So we're going to have to think about how to do this. First, we're going to need to split based on that delimiter. That's going to take us from one string to three strings in a list. Second, we're going to want to apply labels to each of those three fields, so we are going to need to combine or join about six total strings together. So we're looking at first a split and then a join. Okay, so the raw data is going to go into this variable called plant. So what I can do is I can grab the text here, and I'm going to choose the split function. Just a minute. So we're going to go split. And actually, we're going to need to assign this to a list. So I'm going to need to create a new list. And I know at this point it's a little confusing because we already have a list. We already have a couple lists up in our block. So we're going to have to give them names that's going to make it clear which is which. So, okay, let's start with the name for our list, which is going to be uh, initialize local name. Okay, we're going to call this uh, plant fields, so the individual fields of a plant. It's kind of confusing. By fields, I mean like variables, not like farmer fields, something like that. So now what we'll do is we're going to grab this split, and split is going to put things into a list. So split, uh, what text? We're going to use that raw plant string, and uh, just a moment, let's make sure it plugs in. I think it's a little bit mad at me because uh, it doesn't know what block I'm in, so um, just a moment. I need to eventually get him up to this block here. Okay, I paused and fixed it uh, for the moment, and I also noticed I grabbed the wrong puzzle piece earlier. Uh, initialize local name, I grabbed this one with a knob. I wanted this smooth one here, so I fixed that off camera, just so you know if you noticed a subtle change there. Anyway, uh, not worried about the warning just yet. We're going to slide this up into our event handler block up here in just a minute. We just need to tell it right now, we're going to split the plant at what? Uh, at a literal. Okay, let's grab this literal here. We're going to split it at the slash t and that will give us our plant fields variable. Okay, now what we need to do is the plant fields variable will be a collection of our three different fields. So we want to iterate over these. Uh, and we want to, well, actually I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, we want to make new variables for each one of those fields. So back to the variables tab, uh, initialize local. Okay, and we're gonna say plant name Two. And now remember that the split is going to return a list. So let me go to my list, and I'm going to say select list item. Okay. And what's the list? It's this thing called plant fields. Okay. Index, we will just hard code as a zero, which we'll get up here from the math tab, like so. Okay. And we could do this for uh, each of our we can, we're going to end up doing this for each of the elements. So uh, I'm going to go back in it again to variables, and we're going to say we need a new one for uh, location and a new one for description. So I will nest a few of these blocks just like so. A little bit tricky, I know. It looks, looks a little bit funny doing it this way, but uh, let's say description. Okay. And finally, location. Okay. Uh, we can copy and paste. And all we need to do is change the index. What does the index mean? 
The index is the location inside the list where this field is. Okay, so 0, 1, and 2, start counting with 0. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to join these three individual fields together along with some labels. So I'm going to go to text and I'm going to pick uh, join. Okay, whoops, that's not what I want. Not just yet. Uh, let me give one more variable. Initialize local, we'll call it labeled plants two. And now here's where our join comes in. Okay. For the join, we're going to actually need to join six strings together. That's three labels and then three values. So I'm just going to drag this string down here, this little string placeholder, six times. That's going to give me six of these little notch thingies. Okay, so for the first one, we'll do a string literal, and we're going to keep this pretty small. We're going to say plant, colon, space, okay? And what's the what's going to go there? Plant name. Okay. Second one, we'll do another literal, which is going to be our label. And for this one, we'll say space, and then we'll say description, col uh, colon and space. Okay. And what goes in the description? Our description. Okay. Uh, next one in the final tuple, if you will, is going to be location. So space, location, colon, space. Okay. And for location, we're going to choose get location. Finally, we have our recombined, um, our recombined variable called labeled plants, and that's what we want to put up in our upper block. Now, wow, look at that. We're going to have a little bit of work to do here um, because basically I need to take this part. I need to do a bit of refactoring. Take this part out. Okay. Scoot it on down into here. Okay. And then we're going to take the entire block that I just made and scoot it on up into here. Let's see if we can get that to work. There we go. Okay. So get the full plant, get the full plant with the backslash T's, split it by backslash T's into a list, get the plant name from that list, get the plant description from that list, get the location from that list. Finally then, concatenate those three along with their labels back together into a new variable called labeled plants. Take that labeled plants and add it to the list view that the user will see on the screen. So a lot of nesting here, and this is where it's going to be handy to refactor and maybe make a, a procedure out of it, but nonetheless, I think we're going to be in good shape. So I'll save and I'll deploy this on the emulator. Just a moment. Now, one small correction I need to make here that I realized when I paused the video. In Java, we start counting lists at zero. In App Inventor, we start counting lists at one. So previously, I had this as one, two, uh, I'm sorry, zero, one, and two. Now I have it as one, two, and three. So just be cautious. The first element in the list should be a one, not a zero. That's a little difference if you're like me, if you're natively a Java programmer. Nonetheless, take a look at what we got. Uh, once I fix that, plant Eastern Redbud, description, an excellent choice, location, Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. Plant Red Maple, description, excellent fall color, location, Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. So you see, while it's a little tricky and it's a little bit nested, we were able to take a raw string, split it based on a delimiter into its components, and then add a label specific to each of those components and reassemble it all into one string uh, that gets shown on a list. So uh, even if you're using a list, a database, or if you're not using any of that, this is a good exercise in doing both a split and a join in App Inventor. In our next video, we're going to explore the database a little bit more and see why we might want to generate a primary key. I will see you then. Thank you.